Hi, my name is Alex Chen. I am a junior in Yale College, double majoring in computer science and ethics, politics, and economics. And today we'll be discussing the app developed to help report votes for the 2020 Iowa Democratic Caucus, named the Iowa Reporter app, and how it was a complete failure. Let's get started. So first, let's understand the context behind the Iowa Caucus. So in the United States, a president is elected every four years. Uh, and prior to the general election, the major parties in the U.S., the Democratic and Republican parties, as well as some smaller parties, they hold primaries or caucuses in each state to select their candidate. This process takes place over four to five months, and it generally involves one or more states at a time. Primaries are actual secret ballot elections run by the state, uh, while caucuses, on the other hand, are effectively local assemblies where Voting is done in person following a debate, and they're run by the local party, not the state. So on the left, you can see an image from the 2008 Iowa Democratic Caucus, and you can see that this kind of almost looks like a club meeting, right? Um, and so primaries in general are actually much more common than caucuses. Uh, and in fact, the only states that actually run caucuses are Iowa, Nevada, North Dakota, and Wyoming, uh, as well as American Samoa, Guam, and the US Virgin Islands. But Iowa is the first state to actually run a primary or caucus at all in the entire process. So it's really, really important for establishing who the front runners will be. Uh, and historically, if a presidential candidate did not finish in the top three in Iowa, their campaign was effectively just finished as money and excitement would leave the campaign very quickly. So here's what happened on the night of the Iowa Democratic Caucus in 2020. This is a clip from MSNBC's coverage of the election results. One campaign source says that the results app that they were using, this was a new app that they were supposed to be reporting each result from each precinct uh, location around the state, uh, has not been working. And the, the phone backup system that they had in place, according to one source, is a disaster. So it's not great. Um, and in fact, it took days to report the results. So let's try to dig into the reasons why this happened. So the Iowa Democratic Party had contracted an external company named Shadow to create an app to enable the reporting of the results. There's some super interesting history behind it with a string of name changes and acquisitions, um, as well as some controversy around Shadow services being used in the past by different Democratic candidates' campaigns to send messages and solicit donations, um, as well as it generally just being kind of funny to name or rebrand a company Shadow in the field of voting technology, where trust and transparency and visibility are so important. Um, and this field as a whole is actually really interesting because you know, election equipment isn't just counting ballots, right? It's also an entire backend infrastructure for tallying votes. Um, and specifically what we see is we have a few massive vendors as well as some smaller local vendors. So that's kind of the industry that we're dealing with. In any case, there was also a backup system by phone to call the results in if the app failed. But as we saw from the clip, that didn't really work either. Here's what the app actually looked like. On the right side where it says, oops, something went wrong, that's kind of what everybody saw that night when they tried to sign into the app. So let's try to dig into the reasons why the app failed. The caucus had originally been scheduled for February 3rd, 2020, uh, but because the company was running late and released a last minute update, there was actually an update for version 1.1 released just 48 hours before launch, which is really, really not a lot of time. Um, and the Iowa Democratic Party had actually ignored a bunch of known issues before launch, which then resulted in voting day troubles, as we saw, which then resulted in the backup phone plan being quickly overwhelmed, which ultimately resulted in doubt of the integrity of the election results. And arguably, it could have even changed the outcome of the 2020 election entirely, as some have theorized that had the app actually worked, it would have decreased the starting momentum of Joe Biden's campaign uh, and may have thus led to another candidate winning the nomination of the Democratic Party. On the right, we see a quote by Mandy McClure, the spokeswoman for the Iowa Democratic Party, saying, we found inconsistencies in the reporting of three sets of results. This was simply a reporting issue. The app did not go down, and this is not a hack or an intrusion. Uh, the underlying data and paper trail is sound and will simply take time to further report the results. But let's try to dig a little deeper. So right from the outset, there were some software engineering problems. 
The app had been deployed through Test Flight on Apple and Test Ferry on Google, uh, which, as the names may suggest, are supposed to be used for beta testing and not actual production deployment. Uh, this allowed them to bypass App Store review processes, which did speed it up, um, but they had used the free plan instead of the premium plan, which thus drastically limited the number of users that were allowed to only 200. Furthermore, in terms of app testing, there was a lack of testing, a lack of quality testing, and actually no field testing at all, which is particularly important considering that many parts of Iowa are rural and may have had spotty internet. Now, part of the reason why the app had so little testing is because there were really only given two months for development, which is not a lot of time for an app of this scope. In fact, the Iowa Democratic Party had only spent around $63,000 on the app when that figure really should have been more than double. Experts themselves did not trust the app, including the DNC cybersecurity chief and the Department of Homeland Security, who offered to get involved but were ignored. And the app was an example of security through obscurity, which is kind of like burying your money under a tree, as in it wasn't really secure at all, just secret. So these agencies were kind of left out of the process entirely, and this was really exacerbated by the lack of deployment testing and simulation. This was confirmed by Christopher C. Krebs, the director of the Homeland Security Department's cybersecurity agency, saying late Monday evening that the mobile app had not been vetted or evaluated by the agency. And according to a person familiar with the app, its creators had repeatedly questioned the need to keep it secret, especially from the Iowa precincts where it would be used. So if we actually look at the aftermath of the Iowa Reporter app, we see that the Nevada caucus, which had been scheduled for later in February, had planned on pretty much using the same app and had already paid $53,000 for it. But after seeing this app completely fail in Iowa, they scrapped it for a new plan in literally two weeks using Cisco Secure iPads, Google Forms, and paper, and it worked great. So what lessons have we learned from this case? In the political world, software takes time and money. There's trade-offs between features, quality, and cost, but you always want quality to be high. So really, it's a choice between features and cost. Testing, of course, is absolutely essential, and knowing your environment is key to success. In this case, right, an inexperienced company was hired that did not have an appropriate quality management system, the users and the environment were not accounted for in the, system, in the software design, and there was no validation and testing of the software with actual users before deployment. Plus, the deployment method itself wasn't standardized, which resulted in installation errors. And the fact that this project was in the voting tech field really should have increased the stakes. So perhaps this not only holds ramifications for private software developers, but party elites and possibly policymakers as well. For example, why did the Iowa Democratic Party choose Shadow to develop this app, right? Was it maybe the cheapest option? Was it local? Were there connections involved? And you know, it turns out connections actually almost certainly were involved since this company had actually started as a group called Groundbase that was founded by technical officers from the Clinton campaign. Uh, and so we see, right, that part of the reason why technology projects in political and government spaces are so subject to failure is because, in part, there exists this separation between the people in politics who make the decisions and the people who are actually familiar with effective product management strategies, as well as like a total lack of public policy regulation in this area. So it's a real challenge to bridge this gap. So as one final thought, it's interesting to consider whether the Iowa Reporter app will be seen in retrospect as a catalyzing force for introducing better tech practices into government and politics, or if on the other hand, it might be seen as a setback and scare political elites away from embracing this kind of technology. So that was the 2020 Iowa Democratic Caucus app in a nutshell, and I hope it was sufficiently clear how this app reflects the importance of quality management and testing, as well as some of the unique factors that need to be considered in political environments. Thank you.